Welcome to our first Sunday morning service in May. Great to have you with us, whether you are joining us around 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, later in the day, or at some other time during the week. You're all very welcome. On Friday the 1st of May, Michael kicked off a, a new series of A Psalm A Day in May. There are a number of people who are involved in that, who will be sharing a thought, a devotion, a short talk. And these will be posted from early morning each day, Monday to Saturday. And it would be a great encouragement if you engage with that. I know many of you are using other resources at this time. If I can be cheeky and give a wee plug for something that Biblica are doing. Starting tomorrow, the 4th of May, we're starting a journey through the New Testament. And each weekday on the Biblica Europe Facebook page, there will be a post which will link you to a short introductory video and an audio recording from the New Testament. And we are encouraging people to engage with that in a couple of ways. And if you joined in with us, you would cover the whole of the New Testament in eight weeks. So if you have space in your day, I would encourage you to get involved with that. For Food Bank this week, there has been a bit of an increased need from families with small children. And so there's a requirement for a few packs of size six and size three disposable nappies. We have some copies of the next editions of UCB's Word for Today and Word for You. If you want a copy, please do get in touch by phone or leave a message below this Facebook post. As the Belfast Marathon was cancelled this year, Peter Locke decided to run the equivalent distance in his garden. Sharon was also running the equivalent of her leg of the marathon. As visually impaired runners, they would normally run with guides. So a doubly incredible effort to take this on without guides. They are fundraising for a group making scrubs for key workers in Northern Ireland. All being well, they completed this on Saturday the 2nd of May. If you'd like to support their fundraising efforts, uh, there is a link on our Facebook page. And well done to Sharon and Peter. Finally, just to remind you that if you need help with anything, please get in touch and we will do all that we can for you. Be blessed as you worship with us. Good morning. Today we're continuing to think uh, through the story of Jonah. We're in Jonah chapter 2 and today we'll be thinking about how the Lord really brings grace out of a situation that looks like complete weirdness and foolishness. But we're no strangers to that in the scriptures because we talk and we preach about a man who was crucified and raised to life. A man who went to a cross to save the world. Our God on a cross. It seems like a foolish thing. The Bible tells us that. I wanted to, to share with you from 1 Corinthians uh, those words that we read about the cross and its foolishness to the world, but it's the wisdom of God. Let me read it to you. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. This is the word of the Lord. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. 
For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Amen. We worship Christ, the one who was dead and rose again. God has used something that looks strange to the world and he's used it as the means of salvation for everyone who believes. You know, it's going to be that that we look at today in Jonah. Out of his despair in the belly of the fish, he finds the God of grace. Something that looks like his end, his destruction, turns out to be his deliverance. So as we think about that and as we move towards that, let me pray for us as we continue to worship the Lord together in our homes uh, this morning. Let me pray. Our Father in, in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, that you use things Lord, that look foolish to the world, but to us who you save, Lord, we see your grace and the wonder of your work and what you've done for us in Jesus. Lord, we see that it makes sense when we understand what you've said to us and what you've told us about ourselves and the punishment and wages for our sin. Lord, we thank you for the cross. We look to the Lord Jesus today as our strength and as our help. Lord, we thank you that he's poured out his spirit into our lives that we might understand and know what you say to us in your word and so we we pray today that you would speak in your word to us that word about Jonah and about the the message and the mission that you gave to him but we pray that today as we meditate on your word that you would help us to understand your grace more and more in this book and see the Lord Jesus for we ask all this in his name and for his glory alone Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we praise you because you are our great God and we know that you are in complete control of everything. We know that nothing happens outside of your plans. We thank you for all the blessings you have given us, for our fr families, for our friends, where we live, for the food and clues we have. You bless us in so many ways. We thank you for our teachers who miss us. Thank you for the way they are helping us during this time. We pray for our church family as we meet together in this strange way. Help us all to spend time with you by praying and learning more about you from your word. We pray for those who are struggling right now with illness, lack of food or loneliness. We pray that you would provide for them. Help us to show care and support when we can. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. A prayer for our time in this current situation. Let us pray. Living God, in our hour of need, we turn again to you. We have nowhere else to turn. We put our faith in you because you have proved your faithfulness time and again. We reaffirm our love for you because you never let us go. We thank you that you are not distant from us, but have drawn near in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. He understands our worries and fears. Help us to respond as your children now. We pray for this pandemic spreading across the world, remembering all those who have lost loved ones and praying for those seriously ill. We uphold the National Health Service as it responds to this added pressure on its already overstretched services. We pray for doctors and nurses, all in the caring professions who work to help and support people as best they can. We ask you, Lord, to particularly remember the members of our fellowship who work in the profession at this difficult time. We remember those working behind the scenes, those testing samples, confirming results, and giving information to patients. We uphold others trying to understand this virus better, working to create an effective remedy. We continue to pray for our governance at Westminster and storm as they work with the best medical advice to guide us on how we should respond and what action we should take. We give thanks that these guidelines have generally been taken seriously and that all would put them into action. May this crisis bring out the best in us, not the worst. Help us to live by faith and not by fear. To build bridges, not barriers, and to result and to resist all who would speak ill of any other groups. May we not forget our responsibility to one another, not least to the vulnerable and voiceless in our communities. We give thanks that the food bank at our own church has has been a benefit to many during these past weeks. Help us to find ways of keeping in touch and of reassurance to those with underlying health issues for any who feel particularly vulnerable or are in danger at present. As the virus has spread, we pray for the disruption that has caused to normal life, bringing new fears and anxieties. We pray for, for those who have been laid off as their work disappears, for, for financial hardship for individuals and businesses, for the impact on the economy and pensions when austerity has already left its mark. We remember those who cannot visit loved ones in lockdown care homes, for the elderly whose social contacts have been severely curtailed. Help us to find creative ways of keeping in touch and of assuring them they are not forgotten or ignored. We remember the Presbyterian residential homes at this time. Lord, give the staff strength in the trying circumstances. May the residents have God's peace at this upsetting time. And we ask for you, for those who oversee the work of the various PCI facilities. As we as a congregation have found new ways of living through this time, through our video service and DVDs going out. May we not forget our faith, but draw strength from it. So may our worship be heartfelt, our fellowship deepen, and our service increase. God of grace and God of mercy, hear our prayers at this time. Strengthen us by your spirit, so that we may carry on our lives as best we are able looking out for others, sharing love in action, being faithful in prayer, and bringing encouragement, hope, 
and peace, always trusting in you, our rock and our redeemer. These prayers we bring to you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's great to be back. Long time no see. And we're going to read from Jonah chapter 2, starting at verse 1. This is the word of the Lord. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea. The current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfed waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed wrapped around my head. The roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. And my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Sometimes life just seems to go from bad to worse, doesn't it? Sometimes you have a bad day. It's like waking up on a Monday morning on lockdown to hear Boris say, uh, don't say, think we'll be left in a lockdown anytime soon. We can't say when we'll be doing it. You feel like you want to scream. I feel like I want to pull my beard out. But maybe that's just me. Lockdown can be a real chore. We all have bad days. Maybe you're having a bad week when things go from bad to worse. Usually I'm the cause of most of my problems, most of my bad days. I remember one day, uh, in Philly when I was studying I forgot my laptop and I thought it's okay it'll be in the car so I walked out and looked in through the window and there it was brilliant put my hand in my pocket though looking for my keys and I found oh they're not there patting myself down trying to find my keys uh, oh no I've lost my keys but I look in the window of the car And there they are, in the ignition, locked in the ignition. So I thought, okay, right, I'll find uh, someone to drop me home. There's a spare key for my car at my apartment. I'll just get someone to get me home. So I find someone uh, who wasn't in class to, to to drive me home. And so I got to the home, my home, walked to the front door and I realized my house keys are on the keys that are locked in my car. So what did I do? Got my friend to to boost me in through the back window of my apartment. Yes, I broke into my own flat to get a key for the car that I had locked in my car with my laptop that I had forgotten. Sometimes things in life go from bad to worse. We get stuck in a mess where one thing after another hits us. 
Sometimes they aren't things that are too serious, but other times they are things that feel like the end of the world. You know, I remember hearing the story of Jonah as a child and we always think, we always think in that story, isn't it great that the big fish came along to rescue Jonah? God was really good to Jonah to save him like that, to get him that fish. But here's the thing. Have you ever looked down that story in chapter 2 and asked yourself the question, does Jonah see it that way? Does Jonah think it's a great thing to have been swallowed by a fish? What would you be thinking if you were in the belly of a fish and you didn't know how the story ended? You know, if you or I were eaten by a fish, it would seem pretty bleak. I don't know how someone stays alive in the belly of a fish, but Jonah is not happy. It's not a good place. This does not feel like a rescue. As far as Jonah is concerned, this is the worst three days of his life. Look at what he says. It's in his distress, in those first few verses, not his happiness that Jonah calls out to God. The next line, the NIV translates it as, as this, from deep in the realm of the dead, I cried for help. The NIV is giving you this understanding that Jonah feels like he has lost all hope. He feels like he is a dead man. In the Hebrew, it's an idiom. If you had an ESV, it would translate it more literally as this. From the belly of Sheol, that's the land of the dead, I cried. It's drawing a little parallel for us between the belly of the fish, feeling like for Jonah, it's the belly of death itself. You know that Jonah, the fish is not his salvation. It's his tomb. His situation does not feel like a rescue. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where things feel like they are spinning out of control. We feel that there is no escape. That our God has, has put us somewhere that's a punishment. Given us a death sentence to make us miserable. We face real life situations all the time that, that to us feel bleak and wrong, like our world is dying around us. We feel like our circumstances have become a tomb that God has put us in and wants to destroy us in. Our pain's real. We're allowed to feel it. We're allowed to express it even. God gives us words to express it. He gives us grace to express it. It's okay to feel afraid, distressed, like everything in life is a mess because that's what Jonah is experiencing and expressing. But look, even in his distress, in a place that feels like death, Jonah still clings to hope. In his distress, the Lord answered him. From a place that feels like death, the Lord heard his voice. You know, Christians suffer like everyone else, but we suffer with those who have hope. Hope that there is someone out there who hears, who knows, who understands. You know, that hope is important because in our pain, it doesn't always get better quickly. It may even feel like it's getting worse. Because that's where Jonah's cries go next. Even though he knows the Lord hears, he continues to talk about how he feels. And it's not good how he feels. Verses 3 and 4. You hurled me into the deep. Your currents wrapped around me. All your waves swept over me. Jonah feels like the Lord has thrown him into the sea. And Jonah cries out. It feels like the current has grabbed him and pulled him under. It feels like he's trying to swim up for breath. And, and what he finds is the waves keep crashing down on top of him. And with a, with a desperate breath, like he's clawing at the surface, he cries out 
something like, God, where are you? Yet I look towards your holy temple. In the Hebrew poetry, those, those lines, those three lines of Jonah's cry, they sound like drowning. Three lines where things get worse and worse, like Jonah's being dragged down. And the last line is like a frantic struggle where he claws at hope just to, to catch a glimpse of the Lord. And then in verse 5, it's down again. Water all over me, taking away my life, the deep surrounding me. That deep is referring to the same deep that the Spirit of God was hovering over in creation. You remember in Genesis, the Spirit was over the, the deep. The, it's the nothingness that was before the created world. Jonah feels like he's going down to the roots of the mountains. You know, what, what is that meaning? Well, in the culture of the time, Jonah is really expressing he feels like he's at the very bottom of existence. He's at the very bottom of the created world. And he gets dragged down past that. The earth beneath me barred me in forever. He's saying this. He feels like he has been so crushed crushed so pushed so far down that he has left existence altogether he feels like he has been shut out of creation itself that he has been depersoned he feels utterly alone he feels worse than dead he feels like his existence has been wiped out think of it like dying a living death Alive but in emotional pain where no one remembers who you are or that you even existed at all. That's a hopeless place, right? Maybe some of you have felt like you've been in that place before. A depression that eats at your soul. You feel worthless, crushed. You feel like it's beyond what you can bear. The scriptures give us a voice to, to feel that way. The Lord is not a stranger to those emotions that you feel. You know, the Lord Jesus himself was acquainted with that kind of grief. He's the man of sorrows. He's not unable to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. You know, if you feel that way today, crushed because of life circumstances, feeling like you're alone, like you're without any hope, know that the Lord Jesus is not only with you, but he has plumbed those depths for you himself. And in that despair, there is hope. Because look what Jonah says in verse six. But you, Lord, brought my life up from the pit. O Lord, my God. On the brink of feeling totally worthless, like nothing, there is rescue. At the point of complete brokenness for Jonah, of complete hopelessness, comes a rescuer. And who is Jonah's rescuer? God himself. Jonah says, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you. The Lord hears our prayers in the midst of our trouble. Sometimes he can pull us out when all things look hopelessly lost. I read a, a little testimony of Avril Lavigne quite recently. She's famous for singing that song about being a skater girl and about it being complicated. Maybe you remember those songs from a while back. Well, she grew up going to church. She grew up when she was young singing songs about Jesus. But she always wanted to be a singer. And growing up as a teenager, she made it her life's dream and she fulfilled it. She made it. But what she did was she left church and the Lord behind. Then in, in 2014, while she was still in her 20s, she developed a, a really bad disease, Lyme's disease. And it almost took her life. This is what she wrote about her experience of her illness. One night, I thought I was dying. I had accepted I was going to die. My mum laid with me in bed and held me. I felt like I was drowning. Under my breath I prayed, God, 
Please help me keep my head above the water. In the midst of our illness, Avril turned back to the Lord, not away. She found the God of grace. She wrote a song about it. You know, the amazing thing about the Lord's grace is that often at times you get to see it flood in the people's lives in the most difficult and trying times when you're a minister. Sometimes I've seen as people have faced death where they've spent uh, years running away from the Lord, wanting nothing uh, to do with the Lord or, or Christianity or anything to do with him. When all hope has been lost, when they've expended all the, the doctors and, and everything around in the depths of their sorrow and their despair, in the midst of life's fleeting breath, they turn finally and call upon the Lord. And what do they find? Eternal life in the Lord Jesus. Jonah finds that same God of grace and he begins that confession. Those who cling to idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. What does Jonah say? Jonah says, I realise, Lord, I cling to an idol of how I wanted things to be, of how I thought things should be for me, of how I wanted you to be, God, rather than who you actually are. I made you into an idol and I missed out on a God who gives grace to all who turn to him. In that moment of realisation, look how his attitude changes. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. In that moment, what happens? Jonah finds a God of grace, greater than what he realises. The Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto the dry land. Jonah, who once thought the fish was his death, his end, he finds out the fish has become the means of God's salvation for him. Jonah found the God of grace who turned despair into deliverance. You know, last week I said Jesus had said this about Jonah's story, about Jonah being in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. It was a sign, a sign of something that he was going to do, that he was going to die in our place as a sacrifice for our sins, that he was going to plumb the depths of our disgrace to give us life again as that great hymn goes. We read about Jonah's despair. How far does Christ go in suffering for us? Well, it was prophesied in Isaiah. He was pierced for our transgressions. He would be crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brings us peace would be on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We read in Romans what Christ suffered. It was not just death, physical pain on a cross. But God's righteous wrath and fury against our sin. He sweated drops of blood in the garden at the thought of what he would suffer. Not the anguish or pain of a cross, but drinking the cup of God's wrath against sin. Second Corinthians, he who knew no sin became sin for us. At the cross, Jesus himself cries out, out the words of the psalmist, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus plums the agony of the cross in something that we can't get our heads around. The perfect spotless son of God, who was God and is God, who bears the weight of sin and abandonment by the Father. It's a mystery too hard for our minds to grasp. God became sin for us. Hard to understand. You know, in, in the words and experiences of Jonah, in our life's trials, we can get some kind of small, small glimpse of despair. And in that despair, we can find hope. But Jesus has gone to a deeper and darker place than we can ever go or know. Out of this hell, out of this hell, 
that Christ suffered for us. God has made it the means of salvation. Out of something that doesn't look like it makes any sense, from a man-centered view, out of the foolishness of the cross, the Lord brings eternal life. Salvation and resurrection life. Our God turns despair into deliverance. He is the God of unending grace. Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days. He was in utter despair and yet the Lord used it to save him. There is one greater than Jonah that we talk about today. One who was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. Out of the foolishness of a cross, the Lord has used it as the very means of salvation. Jonah finds the God of grace in his darkest hour. When you find yourself in a pit, may you find the God of grace and may he set your feet on a rock that is Christ himself, the greater Jonah, who suffered a fate worse than the belly of the fish for us, that we might find salvation in him. In this lockdown time, in this despair that you may feel, in the situations that you might find yourself in now and in the future, you can cry out to the Lord and may you find that he is the God of grace, able to do far more than you ask, imagine or think.
like I've already said today, you're maybe struggling or maybe you've struggled in the past with things that have made you feel like it's the end of the world, that there is no hope, that there is no future. May you find uh, help in understanding Jonah's situation. And may you find the God of hope in that situation, in a place that feels like the end. May you understand and know the God of grace who lifts us out from the pit and sets our feet on the Lord Jesus. You know, many of us who are Christians struggle in the same way. We're beat down by the cares and the struggles of this life. Jesus says in this life, we will have trouble, but we're to take heart. Why? Because he has overcome the world. May you find strength today in the greater Jonah, the Lord Jesus. He spent those three days and three nights in death and rose to eternal life, that all who believe in him will have that same life when they trust in God's salvation. Let me pray as we close. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your goodness in the Lord Jesus, that he is your salvation. Lord, that we have seen your salvation in him through the foolishness of the cross. It looks foolish to the world, but Lord, we know it's your power to save us. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray today that your grace, mercy and peace from Father, Son and Spirit would shine into our lives this day and all days. Amen.